Okay, so um, we're looking at uh, an interesting topic, right, uh, about um, things that are offered to idols, and specifically, he's talking about the eating of things. So, um, so we, we know that he's talking about food offered to idols and eat, eating of it. And so, um, um, the Corinthian culture uh, had, uh, uh, it was an idol worshipping culture, and so there were idols, there were temples, and and as uh, was the norm, the you know there were food that were being offered to idols, and as a as a part of the worship of it, uh, you know, like food was then distributed to those who were worshiping in the temple. But also the other thing is that it, there were there was food that was sold in the market, which uh, which may have been offered to or consecrated or blessed by the uh, you know, idol, right? So, uh, which was used in as a as a ritual and then uh, sold in the uh, market. So the, these were the, these options, these uh, uh, scenarios were possible. So uh, uh, Paul is actually addressing the uh, the topic of food offered to idols, and uh, this is just one. Uh, one part of it we we see in chapter eight, and then in chapter ten, we see that he deals with it, uh, uh, you know, even more in detail. So here, uh, like we saw earlier, he says that idol is nothing, and the food offered, you know, eating of food also is, um, you know, nothing in the sense, uh, you know, it does not commend us to God, it does not take us closer to God, nor does it uh, prevent me from growing closer to God. Okay, it's just food. And also, you know, he says that an idol, it's uh, it's represents, of course, it's an image, a graven image. Uh, it could be uh, a picture, whatever, a, a statue. But we know that it 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 is nothing because that uh, you know we know that there is uh, one Father, the Son, and you know the, that everything was made through them and through him and for him, right? So uh, he says that uh, because of this knowledge, you don't get puffed up. And uh, you don't let it not be, make you proud, and uh, let you love God, and because of that, you know you are known by God, and let this love be in your heart. Let it edify you, okay, and not cause you to, and let this knowledge co not cause you to be proud or arrogant, so you look down on others and so on, right? So let this be your attitude, okay. So with that, he says, uh, you know, you you have the freedom. No, you have the freedom. You have the liberty to, you know, to eat in a even in, eat eat those things. So he's saying, lest somehow this freedom of yours it becomes a stumbling block, right? So for someone who is not as strong as you are, someone who is weak, who's a who's an immature uh, believer, like who's not a mature believer, who's who still may be new to the faith, uh, who does not have this kind of understanding. Okay, so um, let this not become a stumbling block for them and cause that brother to perish in the sense that, you know, this person sees you doing this. He says, you know, sees you eating in a temple, which means that hey, he's saying that that's fine. Even if you do that, you have the freedom, you know, you're, you have this knowledge. Uh, so it's fine. But if uh, another brother who is weak, who does not have this maturity, uh, an understanding. If he sees you doing that and he does the same, but he is weak, right? He does not have this understanding, and you will actually cause him to uh, stumble in his faith, in his virtual spiritual walk, right? And it says, what happens then? So he cause him to sin, and uh, you wound their weak conscience, and you, you you therefore you sin against Christ, okay? So let, let's read that, uh, verse 10 onwards. If anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will not the conscience of him who is weak be emboldened to eat those things offered to idols? And because of your knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. And when you thus sin, when you sin in this manner, okay, when you thus sin against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never again eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. 
okay so paul is saying you know this is the uh this is the scenario and this is why i will not eat food that is offered to idols you know it's a, it's a completely different thing from what we are normally used to hearing right uh, you know so paul is giving the reason he's saying you know you, when you eat food offered to your idol someone who is, does not have that understanding you're causing that person to sin and if the cause of food you causing that person to sin then you are actually sinning against christ because you wound their weak conscience you're causing them to sin therefore you sin against christ okay so for this reason he's saying i will not i will not rather eat meat at all okay so our freedom and our understanding our knowledge of the truth should not make us proud but we should actually have because of love uh for god and for other believers we should actually have be concerned right about their walk and uh, your decision uh, regarding freedom it is you know you need to be we need to be concerned about their walk as well okay um and uh, and therefore you know you walk uh, with sensitivity and not cause others to fall uh, think about that and uh, in that manner you know when you walk you will not sin against christ because if you are actually causing another person to sin uh, because of your freedom because of your action then you know you're actually sinning against christ okay so any questions here have you ever looked at food offered to idols in this manner you know eating food offered to idol idols in this manner right any any questions what are your thoughts this is one to hear from you guys anyone dev would you like to say you know about food offered to idols you know have you thought about you know this perspective about food offered to idols uh, yes. uh, especially when uh, if it is directly uh, dedicated to the, the the temple and then people bring it and share it to you like like you call it uh, like prasad in uh, is it in hindi or but in nepali yeah. we call it prasad yes. so so those uh, i regard not to take it like mm. when, when we were in school our friends uh, they they do go to temple and bring such foods like 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 those so those food uh, i would not uh, rather not take those Mm. But in yeah. Temple, like, yeah, like in like like some kind of uh, when people invite you for some something, uh, then I, I think it's okay to take the food that 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 is served there. But have you considered the reason why Paul says, you know, don't eat it? You know, or Paul is saying that I will not eat for this mm. reason. You know, yeah. Because yeah. like, yeah. Uh, I, I my opinion would be it's because the the food is uh, directly offered to the to the god uh, i mean their deity mm. so so uh, if we partake that food we are, we are partaking in uh, in their their belief in their thing that they are they are somehow uh, getting connected with their god so so we, we i think we cannot do that okay but but what if you know you know that uh, the idol is nothing you know that the all powerful all knowing god is the god you worship um so in such a scenario in such a case you know uh will you still consider that you know you that you're taking part in the worship when you uh you know eat food offered to idol if i uh, yes go ahead yeah thomas so go ahead go ahead uh, <laughs> knowing that the food is uh, offered to yeah uh, we know that the idol is uh, uh, our god is powerful than the idol right but but but, but my thinking would be uh, the, the devil 
uh, he works in very cunning way. So if we, we give a uh, foothold to him, uh, he will somehow try to do something, which 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 so many times we uh, we do not uh, know and we do not think about it. But uh, the there's there's even though it's it looks like a as an idol, but there there are spirit behind behind those. Right. And, and the the evil spirit would uh, they will work somehow. That is why I, I would not uh, that. Okay. okay, okay, right. Thomas? Uh, the thing is, uh, in another passage, Paul explains uh, when a uh, matter of taking the communion, how can you take the demon's table and the communion table together? Uh, that scenario is also there. And uh, my experience, Pastor, wasn't tradition, I will never bother to take the uh, this uh, food ops to the idols, especially I used to go with the friends to the and all. I won't worship, but along with them, I used to eat uh, prasad and things and all. What happened? These people understood, oh, okay, also God, that is why he also, you know, honoring these things and all. Take. Hmm. See, other Christians and all won't take it, but Thomas is a good person. He respects all the God and he believes all the gods. So some, oh. some oh, we acknowledging what they're worshiping is a God, according to them. So that somewhere uh, hit my mind. So when I understood those things, I stopped taking those things. And suddenly they're asking, why all these days you uh, take part in these things, but now we are not eating. And now I realized what is that? I said like that. Then they didn't force me. So <laughs> that went that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's interesting. You know, I think, yeah. That, so that's the, um, uh, that's the thing, no? Like, See, one thing is that we don't have to fear the idol or even, you know, see, look at it this way. What did the Lord say? That those who believe in him, what will you do? You will go lay hands on the sick, right? You will pray for the sick to recover. They will recover. You will lay hands. You will pray with other tongues. You will also cast out demons. Okay, so which means... We have the upper hand. Right? You will cast out demons when it comes to demons or any um, you know uh, as, uh, assignment of the enemy, any weapon of the enemy. Right? Luke chapter ten and verse nineteen, the Lord says to his disciples that, "Behold, I give you power. I give you the authority to trample on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy." Okay, so. He has placed us in that position. So we do not have to fear. We do not have to be afraid. We do not even have to have a second thought okay, of uh, you know, whether those things will affect me or uh, it will cause something in me. We don't have to have that. But if that thought is there somehow, it's better not to, it's better not to eat. Right, but Paul, you know, you, if you if you look at this uh, chapter very clearly, you know, very uh, if you read through, he's saying yes, you know, people do consider so-called gods, and you know, there are these idols, and there are, there's worship of it, etc. But we know that it is actually nothing when compared to God. These are nothing, right? Yes, like um, they've said, you know, there is that spirit behind the idol. Uh, there is that, uh, you know, uh, and he is actually, Paul talks about it in chapter 10. Okay, so we will look at that also. Okay, but before we go there, you know, before we finish chapter 9 and go there, I just want to, you know, make it clear the reason why Paul says he will not eat. It is not that this thing will somehow affect me. You know, he never gives that at all. In fact, he says, you know, food does not commend us to God, nor does it, you know, uh, uh, you know, what, what are the exact words that he says? Uh, food does not commend us uh, to God. Uh, yeah. Uh, for neither if we eat, verse 8, right? Food does not commend us to God. For neither if we eat are we the better, nor if we do not eat are we the worse. Okay, so, so he's putting it very clear. Now, I know that this is offered to idols. I know that this is maybe used in an act of worship or whatever. But 
eating it, not eating it is not going to affect me, he says. But this is Paul, right? He's saying this is not going to affect me because I have that knowledge that this is nothing. Okay? Um, so I I have this knowledge. I'm, I'm confident. I have this faith that uh, I know who I worship, that he is all-powerful, all-knowing, and he is only God. These things are not God's. I, I know that. And so me eating it, not eating it, does not make a difference to me. Okay. However, me eating it, if it is going to cause someone else's faith, like, like what Thomas is uh, sharing about, you know, about his friends, um, you know, saying that, hey, yeah, he thinks he's actually worshipping. Thomas is, you know, by taking part in this thing and he's eating this prasad, um, he's eating this offering. So therefore, you know, he must be thinking that, you know, this is also God. He, Thomas thinks that all gods are one. Right, so uh, so this is what Thomas's uh, thought is. This is what he thinks. Now, what is if that is the case, then you know we are being a stumbling block. Okay, so to their, uh, you know, now these are not believers, obviously, in in Thomas's case, um, but this is their now they are coming to a wrong understanding. Okay, now if they were, let's say, if there were other believers. Okay, who are they're probably new to the faith. Okay, so now they would also probably come to the conclusion that, hey, Brother Thomas is doing it. He's a good Christian, and I'm just starting to be a Christian. I think it's okay, right? It, I think it's okay to do it, and uh, and even though you know, I, I know I fear this idol. I know these things can attack me, etc. But the Thomas is doing it, and uh, I think it's okay, right? So what is happening there, that person considers that idol to be something, considers eating food offered to idols to be something, and he is eating. And that causes um, uh, you know, him to stumble in his faith. That causes him to be weak in his faith or stumble in his spiritual walk. So now, so then, like Paul is saying, I will not, I will not eat of it. Okay, that is the reason for me to eat, not eat. Uh, he's, he's referring to meat that is sold in the market or meat that is offered to idols. So he's saying, I will not eat. You know, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never again eat meat. I will. I choose to make this decision that I will never again do this because I don't want to make my brother stumble and I don't want to sin against Christ. Okay, so we need to understand why he's not eating, or why he's he's saying, you know, if my eating causes my brother to stumble, uh, a weaker brother, then I will not. Okay, so it is not because, you know, this is going to affect me spiritually, this is going to attack me spiritually. None of those reasons, you know, we don't see any of those reasons there. In fact, he quotes the opposite of that. Right, his reason, right, when he builds up um, the case. You know, whatever he says is uh, is giving the opposite of that. He's saying, you know, I know this is nothing. I know this food is nothing. Food offered to idols is nothing. I know that, and food does not change anything between me and God, right? Uh, so, if I don't eat it, it's not the worst. If I eat it, it's not going to you know, affect me in any way. So he he makes all those statements. No, I, we need to understand that. You know, why he is not eating, okay? Um, because you know, even in our country i know all of us face this kind of a uh, you know scenario one way or the other we might have faced this kind of a situation maybe you know while your neighbors uh, if you're working in office you know that uh, you know that happens uh, office there's some kind of a you know a worship thing happening or a, or a puja or something and then you know we face that so we need to be clear in our understanding Right? Why am I saying no or why am I saying yes? We need to be clear. And it should be for the right reason. Right? So that is why you know, I'm just reiterating this. Um, why does Paul say no? When he chooses to say no, why does he say no? Okay. It is so that the weaker brother does not fall. So that the other person does not stumble. He says, I have the knowledge, I have the freedom. So he's addressing all the people who have the knowledge and have the freedom and who 
you know who want to go about and just live you know uh live confidently and 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 say okay i know this won't you know this won't affect me in any way so i will eat anyway so he's is addressing all those people right uh, that en- entire group of people saying okay why why should i bother doesn't affect me i'll do it but he's saying okay that's fine you have the freedom but consider who is watching you when you're doing it or who is with you when you're doing it the weaker brother the weaker sister okay so we need to you know get clarity and uh, understand this clearly so in chapter 9 uh, however he goes on he, he addresses a different topic okay so we, let's look at chapter 9 and uh, when we continue on in chapter 10 we will see uh, the connection of uh, you know again food offered to idols and um, he reiterates certain things again okay um, okay so let's uh, let's look at chapter 9 okay so chapter 9 um uh, he is addressing uh, he is going to be sharing something about his life um uh, you know some personal decisions that he made and uh, he's sharing that because there were people in who were actually disputing paul's claim to be an apostle okay you know you, you know recall right um uh, paul says in, uh, in in the first chapter in the second chapter right he he talks about you know why are you people saying i am of paul or i am of apollos so there were people um in the corinthian church who saying you know i am of apollos you know i i don't consider paul to be that great i i consider apollos to be great and i consider peter to be great you know cephas peter is great um, but um, i don't consider you know uh, uh, peter uh, paul to be great so on so uh, also on you know so um, so there were such people and who were actually disputing that paul was paul really an apostle was he you know is he an, is he an apostle and uh, i don't see any proof of that you know i don't see any evidence of that was paul really called to be an apostle and in his ministry is is, is it apostolic in any way right uh, you know that the word apostle in greek apostolos means the one who was sent out the one who sent out on a task commissioned by god um a commission for a particular task generally it just says it's a is a term that is used in the army and referred to you know people who are sent out to conquer the land so apostolos sent out once it's someone authorized and uh, who represents the kingdom and uh, the one who the king who sends um, hence sends out that person so fully authorized by that king to represent the king and sent out to uh carry out the task or the or the purpose for which they are sent out right so they um uh, you know doubted that so paul is going on to write certain things here now when it comes to um, you know ap- apostle you know you would study in the apostolic uh, more information but there are three kinds of apostles that we see one is the founding apostles or the 12 apostles of the lamb sorry the ones whom the jesus appointed you know he called them he appointed them and after judas um, you know judas's death there is we see matthias you know who's added to the list and we see that uh, you know they were the early apostles so they we call them the apostles of the lamb which we see in revelation 21 these are the 12 apostles okay then we also see some of the founding apostles you know the others who were referred to as apostles and paul is one of them like paul who uh, you know who writes the you know lays down the doctrines writes two thirds of the you know scripture who who's called by god to do that um and see is is the founding apostles right they brought revelation to the church and so on then we also see a third category of apostles which is uh, the ministry gift of the apostle like we see in ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 um uh, 11 and 12 now these are appointed uh, by the lord jesus uh, he gave some to be apostles prophets evangelists pastors teachers for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of christ for the edifying of the church ephesians 4 11 and 12 so um we uh, we see that uh, this is also uh, you know these are also apostles right so we see that uh, there are three uh, broad categories of apostles now now paul you know god was using him as an apostle and paul you know he gives evidence or he says you know 
uh, in in chapter 9 he's saying my defense to those who examine me is this yeah. and he and he writes down certain um, reasons why he is an apostle okay so uh, let's uh, and in and in, in, in doing so he lists down he doesn't say you know i uh, i had this encounter on the road to damascus and i heard the voice of the lord jesus and even when you know uh, when i was ministering to you guys the lord jesus came stood next to me and encouraged me you know he doesn't give any of that as evidence but he says you know i was i was sent to serve right and i i i sacrificed these things i i i went through these hardships okay so he gives that as evidence of the apostolic ministry so it's interesting to say that see that right okay chapter 9 verses 1 am i not an apostle am i not free have i not jesus seen jesus christ our lord are you not my work in the lord okay so he asks these questions rhetoric questions yeah. the answers are all yes right so he says uh, uh, you know am i not an apostle am i not free have i not seen the jesus our lord are you not my work in the lord okay if i am not an apostle to others yet doubtless i am to you Okay. Okay. Let's say you're saying that you know I'm not an apostle to any of the other people or other churches, other other groups, but definitely for you I am because you are my you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. Okay, meaning that I came, I preached the gospel to you, and it was with the demonstration of the power of God. I taught you. I was there for you know one and a half years. I taught you. I I taught you from the Word. I um, you know taught you about this. the gifts and the power of god the holy spirit and all that and and then you also see um, that demonstration of that power in your own lives so definitely if i'm not for someone else definitely for you you know you are the seal of my apostleship the very fact that i ministered to you and uh, you know and you uh, uh, received the ministry and the the fact that you are believers in the lord the fact that there is a church you're part of this church is you know because of my apostleship Okay, so he starts by saying that you are the seal of my apostleship. My defense to those who examine me is this. Okay, that's what he says in verse three. My defense. Um, I I want to give some proof. I want to give some evidence. And my defense is this. Okay, what is this? So he's saying, you know, do we have no right to eat and drink? Do we have no right to take along a believing wife, as do also the other apostles, the apostles of the Lord and Cephas? or is it only barnabas and i who have no right to refrain from working whoever goes to war at his own expense who plants a vineyard and does not eat of its fruit or who tends a flock and does not drink of the milk of the flock do i say these things as a mere man or does not the law also say uh, law say the same also so he's saying you know all these rights and responsibilities i i have these resp- you know uh, i have these rights you know as a person in ministry as also the other apostles you know to take um uh, to take a, uh, a believing wife and to you know so paul what he's saying is you know i chose willingly not to do that i chose to you know make certain i chose i made some decisions in my life right i i chose okay you know to remain single i chose to uh you know not stop working right because we see that he was a tent maker by profession so he worked uh, and he through that money he supported himself his 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 expenses and also the expenses of the team in some cases right and others would also support the ministry of course but you know he chose to work right and also uh, in certain places in especially in corinth he, he chose not to ask them for support okay so he made a decision he will not ask them for support for uh, for ministry etc he, he he took care of his own needs and all that so he's saying you know um i did all this okay i did all this and this is how i um, this is all, these are some things that i sacrifice now who goes to war at his own expense will a soldier take care of his own expense or will the king and the who's sending the soldier take care of the expense or the, you know from the from the kingdom right who plants a vineyard and does not eat you know you're taking you plant a vineyard and won't you eat of the grapes 
or you know, want to eat of the produce. And if you have a flock, if you take care of the flock, you nurture the flock, won't you, you know, make use of, you know, whether it's milk from the cow or, you know, won't you use that for your sustenance? You will. Okay. So he's saying, do I say this as a mere man or does the law also say that? Does scripture also say that? Is there a scriptural example for doing this? Okay, so he's saying, it is written in the law of Moses, verse 9, or it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Is it oxen God is concerned about? Or does he say it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he who plows should plow in hope, and he who threshes in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown spiritual things for you, is it a great thing if we reap your material things? If others are partakers of this right over you, are we not even more? Nevertheless, we have not used this right, but endure all things, lest we hinder the gospel of Christ. You know, look at his perspective, right? So he's saying, others have this right. In the Bible, like we see in the scriptures, in in the in, you know in, in the books of uh, written by Moses. So he sees he's quoting from Deuteronomy, saying, you know, the Lord says, do not, uh, you know, the instruction is not to muzzle an ox, ox while it's threshing the corn, not to you know if it wants to eat, you eat it, you know, let him uh, let it eat, don't tie its mouth, don't muzzle an ox, don't tie its mouth, so that it's unable to eat while it's doing that work of threshing the corn. If it eats a mouthful, it's fine. So that is what we see. And also, you know, uh, one who sows, one who tills the land, one who sows the land, he's, he does it in hope that he can partake of some of those things. So, so what is it? You know, if we sow, if we have sown spiritual things, is it a great thing if we reap your material things? Okay that we get material benefits out of because of our ministry, some offerings that you give, you know, to use that. Is it is it wrong? He says, nevertheless, we have not used this right. Okay. It is the minister's right to do that, but we have not used, I have not used it. But endure all things, lest we hinder the gospel of Christ. Now, I endure. You know, even if it is lack, I endure it. Even if there's hardship, I endure it. Lest I hinder the gospel of Christ. You know, for some reason you think that I'm here just for the money, and you don't, you know, receive Christ because of that. Right? Lest I hinder the gospel of Christ, the good news of Christ, because of you know you, some some of the things that I my actions. You know, it is right. It is my privilege, but uh, because of this, I don't want to hinder the gospel of Christ. I don't want to hinder you from receiving the gospel of Christ. For some reason, you make a decision, and you're saying, this man is for the money, and he's come here to you know, uh, take our money, and so I'm going to resist him and his message. No, I don't want that. So I supported myself. Right? Verse 13, do you not know that those who minister the holy things eat of the th things of the temple? Because you know he's talking about the tabernacle, and the priest goes, and the high, uh, uh, high priest goes, and you know, he will eat of the food that is there, or the uh, the bread that is there. He will eat of the show bread, actually, right? So he's saying that uh, do you not know that those who eat of the things of the temple? So I'm sorry, he's not talking about the tabernacle, but he's talking about the temple itself. That same principle that those who serve partake of the uh, offerings of the altar. Even so, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. But I have used none of these things, nor have I written these things, that it should be done so to me. For it would be better for me to die than that anyone should make my boasting void. Okay, so he's saying, you know, uh, did I, I did not, even though the Lord has laid down that principle that, okay, those who serve, minister, they should partake of what people give or you know uh, what uh, material things that is the principle but i have not used it and even when i'm writing to you he saying you know even when i'm writing to you in this letter about this it is not that i am expecting anything because you read this don't give me material things 
okay so he's saying you know this is not my expectation okay but i'm writing to clarify certain things so this is not my expectation so so he's saying you know i'd rather die than if anyone should make my boasting you know this i'm i'm boasting about this uh, i don't i don't want this boast to be made in you know you know i don't want it to be cancelled or made void i'd rather die wrong about because he did it for a very uh, you know uh, uh, he did he did, he did these sacrifices for the sake of the gospel for the sake of that they nothing should stop them from receiving the gospel right so so he feels very strongly you know i'd rather die than my boasting be made void or empty or uh, you know it be cancelled anyway right so he's saying um um verse 16 for if i preach the gospel i have nothing to boast of for a necessity is laid upon me to um laid upon me yes who is me if i do not preach the gospel so i'm not preaching this gospel as a uh you know as something that's um uh you, you know, like he's he's saying you know that uh, even though uh, it is uh, you know it is this these are the reasons and this is the principle behind um, the support of those who minister you know that's not the reason i'm preaching right i'm preaching it out of a necessity i'm preaching it as a good steward and i'm if i you know there is a responsibility i have towards god right he's saying woe is me if i don't preach the gospel like you let me be cursed if i do not preach the gospel you know very strong like romans 1 also he says you know right romans 1 and 15 uh, is it 15 or 16 he says um you know i'm not ashamed of the gospel right because it is the power of god Okay, Romans one and verse sixteen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God. So he knows this is the reality, and he is preaching because it is a necessity for him. You know, he understands that this is. I'm a steward. I'm called. I'm I, I'm sent by God. I'm commissioned by God to preach the gospel. Therefore, I will preach, not for the other things, not because I get some material benefit, not because you know uh, um, I need to live, right? in this manner no you know, i am supporting myself i am doing this and woes me if i do not preach the gospel so he's saying in uh, verse um, verse 17 right uh, sorry verse 16 if i preach the gospel i have nothing to boast of of necessity for necessity is laid upon me yes woes me if i do not preach the gospel for if i do this willingly i have a reward but but if against my will i have been entrusted with the stewardship so he's saying you know in other words he's saying that i'm doing this willingly i have a reward i'm doing this willingly and it is a stewardship i have been entrusted with the stewardship right we know who a steward is one who is faithful to the things that he has been entrusted the responsibilities that have been given or the resources that have been given to him like a steward is like a manager an overseer right he he says that earlier also you know who are we we are stewards of the mysteries of god he says Right? You consider us as servants of God, as stewards of the mysteries of God. So he's saying, you know, that I have the stewardship. Uh, I have to be faithful to that. I, I so I do it willingly. I share this uh, gospel willingly. So what is my reward then? That when I preach the gospel, I may verse eighteen, I may present the gospel of Christ without charge, that I may not abuse my authority in the gospel. Okay, so this is. this is my reward you know i want to present the gospel without charge you know without any material benefit to me without any profit to me i don't want to charge you for it right um and and the thing is that i don't want to abuse my authority i have authority the authority for edification right he talks about that authority has been given to me right as a, as a servant of god i have the authority but i don't want to abuse or misuse that authority in the gospel okay so um so, so um you know uh, some powerful truths life change perspective to be a servant of god to be a servant of christ right paul shares that 
And he says, verse 19, For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under law towards Christ, that I may win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. Okay, so, you know, you, you see Paul's heart. You know, his reason for doing ministry, okay, and the way he did it. Right? He's saying to the Jews, I became as a Jew, certain things, and I will church, maybe the way he ministered, it will be from the scriptures, it show them from, from their own scriptures. To the big Jews, I became as a Jew. You know, I would go into the synagogue, observe certain things. To the ones who were under the law, as those who are under the law, you know, similar to Jewish people. And those who are without the law, yes, as a person who's without the law, but he makes a clarification, you know, not as a lawless person without Christ. Okay, he says, but under law towards Christ, not being without law toward, not as a person who does not, you know, consider God or consider the uh, the values, uh, the truth, and etc. But as Though as uh, under law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without law, who are you know non-Jewish people, Gentiles, uh, that I might win them over. Okay, and so I to the weak I became as weak, that in all things uh, I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Okay, so this is what I want to do. That uh, I want to relate to people. Um, become be relevant to people, not compromise on my own, you know, purity. You know, that's what he says, right? Not as without law towards Christ, not to compromise on the message, not compromise on my own purity, uh, etc. But I want to be all things to all people, so that by all means I may save some, that they may come to the saving knowledge of God. Now this I do for the sake of the gospel right that i may be a partaker of it so so this is what he says that i've been entrusted i'm a, I'm a steward i do it willingly i don't do it for material benefit and i do it so that people will be saved okay this is why i do it this is why this is how i do it and this is the reason why i do it or why i minister in these ways okay now you are asking me whether I'm an apostle. You are examining. You know, you're saying, you know, is Paul really an example? Uh, you know, an apostle. Let me tell you. You know, this is how I minister, and these are the reasons why I minister in this manner. Okay. Then, verse twenty-four uh, to twenty-seven. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now we do it for, no, do it to ob obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself become disqualified. Okay, so he's saying that you know, everyone who runs in a race, now he's talking about, you know, the race and the, and typically the Greek, uh, you know, uh, they would have these sporting events in that arena. So he's saying, run in such a way that you may obtain the prize. Okay, don't just go for a jog or, you know, don't just run without any direction without any purpose. Live your life with purpose, with a sense of direction, and the purpose is to obtain the price. Right? Live with purpose. In other words, he's just saying live with purpose. He's just saying, he's not saying, you know, you live competitively or, you know, not like that. He's saying you live with purpose. Okay. Now, he says, now, everyone who competes for the price, you know, this is the direction, this is why they are competing, or is running the race, is temperate in all things, which means is uh, the word he uses there is uh, temperate. 
means when a person is sober minded is disciplined in all their uh, in all the way they live their lives right uh, is uh, verse 25 right so saying is is uh, is temperate is uh, is disciplined and the who are the people who are um, who, who want to actually uh, win, run in such a way so that they can obtain the price okay so he's uh, the word he, the greek word he uses there you know the person will be self controlled okay the person is not going to be without control the person will be self controlled self disciplined they they are able to you know uh, live in a way that uh, uh, that is temperate okay in other words they are empowered by the holy spirit and uh, you know they are living in a disciplined way so he's saying that uh, you know so they do it why right anyone who's competing for a crown is saying you know in a sports event they live in a disciplined manner they might exercise wake up at a certain time uh, you know practice um, uh, you know exercise their body their muscles and so on so that they are strong in order to win a crown win a prize that is perishable right it is perishable in the sense uh, you know it's uh, yeah it's it has some value but you know it's a material thing right it will be cut up it is it is perishable it's it's for a short time and someone else will win it the next time right it's for a short time but we do it for an imperishable crown because the reward is an eternal reward right a spiritual thing which does not perish so but we do it for an imperishable crown and therefore i run but not with uncertainty so you think therefore i run meaning you know when the bible talks about walk uh, walking and running uh, uh, you know, running referring to our life the way we live our life our lifestyle right walk as led by the spirit or run with endurance it talks about our life the way we live our life the way we make our choices right so he says i run not with uncertainty but with certainty okay and thus i fight in the sense is talking also not, not talking about fighting with people or you know he even if if there is a spiritual a fight of faith he says not as one who beats the air but you know as uh, or just you know punching in the air without any meaning without any uh, without any target but i do it i discipline my body and bring it under subjection lest when i have preached to others i myself might become disqualified right so when i preach he's saying you know i want to live it out whatever i'm preaching i want to live it i want to you know i don't want to say something and then live another way and at the end of it you know i myself become disqualified no i don't want to do that so this is how i minister and so these are the evidences that i'm placing before you the ones who are examining and saying you know am i really an apostle okay so he's saying this is this is how i sacrifice these are the choices i made and this is the reason i share the gospel right it is because i am a steward and i do it willingly i don't do it for a you know for any material benefit and this is how i live my life with self discipline being temperate and uh, i do it with certainty you know knowing the purpose for which i am sent and i live my life like this because i i don't want to preach something and do something else my life and preaching are one and the same i don't want to become disqualified after i have preached okay so with that we come to the end of chapter 9 and uh, very interesting right chapter 8 and chapter 9 so uh, next session we'll we'll continue so we we'll, today we looked at the half of chapter 7 and chapter 8 and chapter 9 okay so uh, okay we'll stop here you guys have a good week and uh, we'll meet again right god bless Thank you.